Hariyata Jeeva Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Hayagriva Nashim Mahavama Nashimadu Sudhana Prajendrananda Nashama Putana Gatana Kaitaba Satana Jaya Dasarati Rama Yashoda Dulala Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purandhara Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Bhavana Sundara Bhara Ravana Thakura Makana Taskara Gopi Jana Vashtrahari Brajera Rakala Gopa Vrindapalo Chitta Hari Vamsi Dahari Yogendra Bandhana Srinanda Nandhana Prajajana Bayahari Navina Nirada Rupa Manohara Mohana Vamsi Bihari Yashoda Nandana Kamsani Shudana Nikonjara Sabilahasi Kadamba Kanana Rasa Parayana Vrinda Vipina Nivahasi Ananda Vardhana Primani Ketana Pulashara Yojaka Kana Gopanga Nagana Chitta Vinodana Samasta Guna Gana Dhamma (laughs) 
Yamuna Yamuna Jivana Gopi Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Namashura Ras Go Krishna Yash Rako Vachanamana Mohara Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Harada Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janabala Bhagirid Bharadhari Gopi Janabala Bhagirid Bharadhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nittai Gaur Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Nittai Gaur Hari Bo. Jai Jai Prabhupad, Prabhupad, Prabhupad Jai Srila Prabhupad. Por
Premanande. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nasta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Nashtaki So I want to begin this morning. I want to start with a verse from the second chapter of the first canto which Prabhupada considered to be one of the most important verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So, we can repeat. Kamashyanandriya priti Kamashyanandriya priti Laboji veta yavata Labo jiveta yavata Jivasya tadva jignasa Jivasya tadva jignasa Narto yas cheha karma be Nato yas cheha karma be Kama shanandriya priti Labo jiveta yavata Jivasya tadva jignasa Nato yas cheha karma be Kamashanandriya priti Labo jiveta yavata Jivasya tadva jignasa Narto yas cheha karma bi Kamashya of desires. Na, not. Indriya, senses. Priti, satisfaction. 
Laba gain Jiveta self preservation Yabata so much so Jivashya of the living being Tadva the absolute truth Jignasa inquiry Na, Na, not, not. Atha, end. end. Yacha, iha, whatsoever. No, uh, whatsoever else. Karma be, by occupational activity. Translation. Life's desires should never be directed towards sense gratification. One should desire only a healthy life of self-preservation, since a human being is meant for inquiry about the absolute truth. Nothing else should be the goal of one's works. You can all repeat. Life's desires should never be directed towards sense gratification. One should desire only a healthy life or self-preservation. Since a human being is meant for inquiry about the absolute truth. Nothing else should be the goal of one's works. Srila Prabhupada's purport, the completely bewildered material the completely bewildered material civilization is wrongly directed towards the fulfillment of desires in sense gratification. In such, in such civilization, in all spheres of life, the ultimate end is sense gratification. In politics, social service, altruism, philanthropy, and ultimately in religion, or even in salvation, the very same tint of sense gratification is ever increasingly predominant. In the political field, the leaders of men fight with one another to fulfill, fight with one another to fulfill their personal sense gratification. The voters adore the so-called leaders are when they promise sense gratification. As soon as the leaders as soon as the voters are dissatisfied in their own sense gratification, they dethrone the leaders. The leaders must always uh, disappoint the voters by not satisfying their senses. The same is applicable in all other fields. No one is serious about the problems of life. Even those who are on the path, even those who are on the path of s salvation desire to become one with the absolute truth and desire to commit spiritual suicide for sense gratification. But the Bhagavatam says that one should not live for sense gratification. 
one should satisfy the senses only in as much as required for self-preservation and not for sense gratification because the body is made of senses which also require a certain amount of satisfaction. There are regulative directions. There are regulative directions for satisfaction of such senses. But the senses are not meant for unrestricted enjoyment. For example, marriage or the combination of a man with a woman is necessary for progeny, but it is not meant for sense enjoyment. In the absence of voluntary restraint, there is propaganda for family planning. But foolish men do not know that family planning is automatically executed as soon as there is search after the absolute truth. Seekers of the absolute truth are never are never just a minute sorry Seekers of the absolute truth are never allowed by unnecessary engagements in sense gratification because the serious seekers seeking the absolute truth are always overwhelmed with the work of researching the truth in every sphere of life. Therefore, the ultimate end must be seeking after the absolute truth. And that sort of engagement will make one happy because he will be less engaged in varieties of sense gratification. And what that absolute truth is, is explained. And what that absolute truth is, is explained in the, in the, in the next verse. Omagyana Timaranda Syakyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurve Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Nitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindava Nishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhai Evacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare.
So this is a very important verse spoken by Sutta Goswami to the sages in the Naimisharanya forest. The sages had all gathered because they were concerned about the onset of Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga. If you were in the Dwapara Yuga, then you know that Kali Yuga is coming. Then we will be in anxiety. The sages were feeling some concern for the people that Kali Yuga is going to come. Very unfortunate time means short life. Kali Yuga, short life, right? In Satya Yuga, people could live one lakh. In Treta Yuga, people live 10,000 years. Dwapara Yuga, 1,000 years. Kali Yuga, not even 100. Less. Many people die even 50, 70, you're as good as dead. So Kali Yuga, life is short. And people are lazy. They don't put a lot of time and effort to, to become self-realized. They're lazy, they're unlucky. They're often cheated. They want to find the truth, but they're directed to some rascal who simply cheats them and gives them some nonsense philosophy. They're lazy, unlucky, misguided, always disturbed. People don't have peace of mind. They're always disturbed. And even Arjuna, before the Kali Yuga had even begun, even Arjuna was telling Krishna, Chanchala Himana Krishna. Very difficult to control the mind. If even Arjuna cannot control the mind 5,000 years ago, what is our condition today? We're very unfortunate. But we have some good fortune, although it's some, although we're unfortunate, there is some good things also in the Kali Yuga. The good things are Kirtana Deva Krishna Shya Mukta Sangha Param Bhajat. Right? Srimad Bhagavatam says, Kaler Dosha Nide Rajan Astiheko Mahadguna. Kirtana Deva Krishna Shya Mukta Sangha Param Brajit. The, the age of Kali is an ocean of faults. But there's one good thing that simply by the chanting of the holy names of the Lord, one can get all success. We have to take advantage of this. But we're unfortunate. We, we're not able to understand the value of the kirtan. We go off to some other thing. We get diverted. Lord Chaitanya had to chastise Makunda. There was this one devotee and Chaitanya Lila Makunda. And he had a beautiful voice. He could sing so nicely. Even when we sing Gora Arti, we talk, we praise also Makunda, that he's singing very sweetly. So Lord Chaitanya was upset with Makunda. Why? Because Makunda would go here and there. He would not be so faithful to just simply be with the devotees. And we, he would go off with other people he would go and hear from the Yoga Vashista. He would go and hear about the glories of the impersonal Brahman. He would go to other different groups and associate with them. 
Lord Chaitanya was not pleased with him. And Lord Chaitanya, he was giving blessings to everyone. And the devotees said, what about Makunda? What about Makunda? And Lord Chaitanya said, I will not give him blessings. I will not see him even for thousands of births. For a thousand births, I don't want to see him. So when Makunda heard that the Lord was ready to see him after 1,000 births, then Makunda felt relief and he thought, oh, I'm so fortunate. The Lord will still see me. I just have to wait 1,000 births. So when Lord Chaitanya heard that Makunda was so patiently waiting to see him again, then Lord Chaitanya became merciful and he told him, come, you come. And he told him, be faithful. Don't go here and there. You simply stay in the association of devotees and chant the holy name. Right? The qualification of a devotee. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was asked by another devotee. It happened. Satya Raj Khan. Satya Raj Khan used to go every year to visit Lord Chaitanya in Jagannath Puri. And they would stay there for some time, like Ratiatra, they would be there. And then after everything, then time to go back to Mayapur, go back to Navadweep. And before they would go back, they would come to see Lord Chaitanya to get some instructions. So Satya Raj Khan came to see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he said to him, he said to Lord Chaitanya, he said, my Lord, he said, I'm a very fallen soul. I'm in householder life. How can I ever make advancement? And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, you have to chant the holy name and serve the Vaishnavas. These two things will help you to free you from your entanglement in the material energy. Chanting the holy name and serving the Vaishnavas. So, then the Satcharaj Khan said to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I have to serve the Vaishnavas. How, how do I recognize the Vaishnavas? How do I know? Who is the devotee? So how do we know who is a devotee? Maybe we look for some neck beads. You look for the Tosi Mala around the neck. Well, many people wear Tosi Mala. We don't know if their devotees are not. That's not really enough. Devotee, there's a special characteristics, qualification of devotee. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, Asat Sangha Tyag E Vaishnav Achar Stri Sangha Ekasadu Krishna Bhakti Ara He says, Asat Sangha Tyag The nature of a devotee is they will give up they will give up the association of the material, of the asat. They will not associate with material things. They will not, they will not be watching Bollywood movies. Right? They won't be watching the football. They'll be watching, they'll be watching Krishna in their heart. Krishna in her and the de pure devotees in their heart, they see the pastimes of Krishna. That's the real television. You want to watch that television. The television in the heart <coughs> where Lord Krishna is per just sorry. <coughs> I just came off a long flight yesterday, so I, 
I don't do very well in the airplanes. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is telling the devotee, what is the characteristic of a devotee? Asat Sangatyag. He gives up the association of the Asat. Evaishnav Achar. That is the behavior of a devotee. Sri Sangha Ekasadu Krishna Bhakti Ar. He's also a devotee is also cautious about dealing with the women, not too much association with the opposite sex. Of course, you're married, all right, you associate with your wife. You don't have to associate all the time with your wife, though. We, ha we have to also get association with the devotees. It's important for us to take advantage of the association of devotees. So, Lord Chaitanya was explaining like this, the characteristic of a devotee. Another time, when he was questioned by Satyaraj Khan, Lord Chaitanya was asked again how to recognize a devotee, and he said, anyone who chants the holy name one time he is considered a devotee. So people like that, when they hear this, oh, I'm a devotee, I chant the holy name one time. You know, so that's true. Your spiritual life begins when you chant the holy name. You may chant only once, that is the beginning of your spiritual life. It's not perfect, you have to go on from there. So, Lord Chaitanya said, anyone who chants even one time is considered a devotee. Next year, he came back again. And again he asked, how to recognize a devotee? This time, Lord Chaitanya said, anyone who regularly chants the holy name, then he is a devotee. Just like initiated devotees, we make vows to chant minimum 16 rounds every day. So regularly chanting, that's a devotee. But again, the next year, Lord, the, the, the man came again, and again the same question, and this time, Lord Chaitanya said, that person who simply by, you simply see him and he makes you chant the holy name. That he inspires other people to chant the holy name simply by his presence, then he is a devotee. So try to understand what Lord Chaitanya is saying. He's explaining that there are different levels of devotees. We say kanista, madhyama, uttama. There are different levels of devotees according to their faith. It's not all one. Some people are just beginning to chant. Some people are chanting regularly and other people are chanting with great faith and devotion, and they're inspiring other people to chant also. So we have to understand the nature of a devotee. Devotees are not attached to sense gratification. Srila Prabhupada regularly spoke from the teachings of Lord Rishabdev. Now, Rishabh Dev was a, a great avatar of the Lord long ago, and he had 100 sons. And before he retired to take Vana Prast, he gave instructions to his sons. Vana Prast. I think many people must have taken Vana Prast here. The people who used to be here, they're not here anymore. 
So I hope they've all taken Vana Prast and gone off to Vrindavan or somewhere to continue their spiritual life. Uh, anyway, Rishabdev was telling his sons, he said to his sons, he said, life is not meant for sense gratification because the pleasures of the senses that like filling the belly that is there even for the animals which eat stool even the animals which are eating stool like the hog the pigs they're also having sense gratification so life is not meant for that you don't want to be like the pigs and the hogs and the dogs. That is not human life. So Rishabdev told his sons, you should do tapasya, undergo some tapasya, some austerity. And by doing austerity, you will become purified. And with when you are purified, then you can experience real pleasure, the highest pleasure, spiritual pleasure. So that was the teaching of Lord Rishabdev. He was directing his son, and the sons took it very seriously. From the 100 sons of Rishabdev, there were the nine Yogendras. They were all the nine Yogendras, Nav, Nav, Nav Yogendras, they travel preaching the message of Bhagavatam everywhere. And then there were other sons. Mah Bharat was a son of Rishabdev. He ruled the world. And then his brothers also, they had part of the, they all took responsibility for the kingdom. And, and the remainders were all Brahmanas. Although their father was Kshatriya, Rishabdev, the remainder sons, 80 and more, they all were Brahmanas. So Lord Rishabdev's teaching had effect that his sons took it very seriously. They gave up sense gratification. Sense gratification means filling the belly. Of course, we have to eat. Everyone has to eat. We, ha we, need, we need to have some sense gratification. But the scriptures direct us to what is the proper level of sense gratification. Just like we have to eat, but we don't have to eat anything and everything. We have to be careful what we eat. We should want to eat Prasadam. We should want to eat prasad. It's very important that you get prasad. Uh, in Kuwait, the devotees have, a, a, there's a lot of devotees working in the labor camps. And every day, the devotees in the cent who are not in the labor camps, they're cooking. And they're cooking for more, like a hundred people because they're in the labor camps, they're not able to come for the programs and they cannot get prasad up there also. So the devotees, they cook three meals a day and send it every day to the labor camp so these devotees there can get prasad. A wonderful service that is really uh, mercy on the part of the devotees there. So, controlling the tongue, we want to be very conscious what we eat and where you eat because we say disease comes from the mouth. Be careful what you eat. If you, just like if, if you eat food which is uh, touched or cooked by a contaminated person, then you will also get that contamination. The disease spreads. We want to be very careful to control the tongue. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna also says, 
Don't eat too much. Don't eat too little. So some regulation should be there. Eating, we have to eat. But don't eat too much. Just take what is necessary so that we can continue to serve Krishna. That is important. Just like sleeping, we have to sleep. Uh, how much we should sleep? Bhagavad Gita said, don't sleep too much, don't sleep too little. Sleep enough so that you can serve Krishna the next day. That is important. We have to be able to have health so that we can properly serve Lord Krishna. So, regulation in sense gratification is very important. And Prabhupada also talks about married life, that even in married life, people sometimes think marriage is just for sense gratification. But Prabhupada explains that in married life, people sometimes, they talk about family planning. He said family planning is achieved when we are serious to understand the absolute truth. If we try, if we're serious about becoming self-realized, we want to understand the goal of life, then we have to control the mind and the senses. And that control requires restraint. Srila Prabhupada would sometimes tell devotees, he said, he said, Married life is like going to a feast and fasting. <laughs> Prabhupada's description, very interesting. Do you ever go to a feast and fast? Not very often, right? But married life is like that, that you can have a lot of sense gratification if you want. You can eat all kinds of food, and you can sleep a long time as well. You know, it, you're married, you're not staying in the ashram. Nobody cares if you get up in the morning or like that. So that tendency is there. We have to be disciplined. Sense control is required. Controlling the senses. Actually, the best qualification before married life is brahmacharya. One should first of all practice brahmacharya and be trained in brahmacharya life and then go into married life. That is proper. And, and you can see in Srimad Bhagavatam it also tells like that, that the great kings, before they got their sons married, they'd send them to do austerities. Even duck Daksha. Daksha had many sons and he wanted them to help him because Daksha is a prajapati and he wants to produce progeny to fill up the universe. But what kind of progeny do you want? You want good progeny. We want good progeny, good children. We don't just want children like the cats and the dogs. We want quality children who will be good devotees. And so it comes about when one is disciplined, when the man and the woman control their mind and senses, then they can produce quality children. And you get children who can go on and become great devotees. Right? Prabhupada explains, we should want children who will never take birth again. This will be their last birth. They will go back to Godhead. Or you want a child who's an avatar, an incarnation of God. Incarnations of God are not so common, however. But at least you should think, this child will not have to come back again. This will be their last birth. And then defending the, uh, the activities that in, in, in life. Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. These are the, the propensities 
we say this is the animal propensities. So defending, we have to also do that. We have to defend what is for Krishna's service, what you use in the service of Krishna. Actually, nothing is ours, but we're defending, we're defending, we're trying to, we're, we're so worried. Who's going to take away my sense gratification? So don't be attached to sense gratification. Be attached to Krishna. We have to change the attachment from the body to Krishna. Our real attachment should be to Krishna. And we can develop that attachment by chanting every day, by coming here every day and engaging in the activities, seeing the deity, bowing down to the deities, chanting the holy name, hearing from the scriptures, all of these activities, they will help us to control our mind and senses and to pr prepare us to go back to Godhead, back to the supreme abode. <coughs> we should be very determined that we want to go back to Godhead. We want to get out this material world. How to get out we, the qualify by devotion. We have to have devotion. <coughs> we, we have devotion, but we're misdirecting that devotion. We're devoted to the family. We're devoted to our jobs. We're devoted to our country, all of these different things, they will bring us back. That devotion will bring you back in the material world. You may de be devoted to your country. You'll take birth again in the country, but you may not take human birth. You may take birth in some other form of life. So we have to be very conscious, conscious of our spiritual identity. We're not saying no sense gratification, but we're saying hi the higher sense gratification, the highest sense gratification, the pleasure of the soul, right? There's a higher pleasure. There's the pleasure like the hog and the dog and there's a pleasure like the great souls. The great souls are also feeling pleasure. They take pleasure in chanting the holy name, and they take pleasure in worshiping the Lord and reading the scriptures. That is spiritual pleasure. And that pleasure takes us back to Godhead takes us out of the material world. So we want to have that intention. Srila Prabhupada therefore said this verse, so important for us, that life is meant for cultivating this taste, taste for devotional service, not a taste for just simply eating, sleeping, mating, defending. That is the animal life. And if we are only busy in these activities with no connection to Krishna, then we are dvipada pashu. We are the two-legged animal. But we don't want to r be in that condition. And how to t overcome it? Simply by adding devotion to Krishna. We don't have to give up the activities. We just have to change the consciousness, to change the mood in which we perform the activities. Do everything for Krishna, for his pleasure. Then we can experience real pleasure. The pleasure comes in service. 
not being the master. There's more pleasure in being the servant than in being the master. And that is why Lord Krishna himself came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Krishna came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to experience that pleasure, the pleasure of service. So we request all of you, awaken this mentality. All right, it's nine o'clock. Is there any question? Anyone? Okay, so we will go on tonight. We'll begin the prayers by Queen Kunti this evening. What time is the class this evening? 7.45. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go back to Vrinda Ki. Hare Krishna, so we will thank Maharaj by chanting one time Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. So today evening uh, class will be there, tomorrow morning also class will be there, tomorrow evening also class will be there, and every day evening there is class. So now we will move to the temple hall for, for honoring Mahaprasad. Hare Krishna.